In this video we'll cover some of the more advanced features of wireless fencing that we didn't cover in the basics video. So that'll be things like charging, what all the different buttons do and how to operate the system with a piece. To charge the base station you simply plug it in using uh, the micro USB which is supplied with the system. Uh, it plugs into the, the plug on the side here and likewise for the fencer pack you have similarly a micro USB slot on the bottom here. So charging should take around six hours for any of the components. You'll be given a power indication when you turn it on, either of the parts. So uh, the fencer pack has a green LED to say that it's charged. That LED will turn red when you're on low charge, but you'll still have about 40% power by then, and then flashing red. So you really don't need to charge it until it starts flashing when it'll be at about 10% power, and you'll still have probably 10 hours of fencing left on the pack. For the base station, You've got three lights above the power switch, red, orange, green, which are fairly self-explanatory at the moment. It's on green, so it's fully powered. Orange is down to about 40% power, so you've still got tons of time left when it's down to orange. Red is 20%, and then it will go flashing red at 10%. But again, you'll have many evenings of fencing when it's flashing red even, so you don't need to repeatedly charge the battery just because it's dropped down to orange. Leave it until it gets red, and that will be better for the battery in the long term and improve its um, lifespan going forward many tens of years. The next control is the volume control, which should be fairly self-explanatory. It's here in the middle, and you press it in order to cycle through the volumes. There's a low, a medium, a high, and then a mute mode. So as you go between them, and be warned, the high is quite loud, so you'll get quite a loud beep as it changes. So that's low, medium, high, and mute. Next up, you've got the weapon select, which again is hopefully very self-explanatory. It's a simple toggle through foil, epee, saver, red, orange, green, and you just press to keep cycling through the weapons until you get to the one that you need. So I'd like to take a minute to talk about some of the additional features of the side panel. So we've covered already the micro USB charging and uh, additionally you then have an extra power supply which is just to power extension lights. So micro USB doesn't have the power to drive lights and neither does the internal battery. So if you want to use extension lights you plug a 12 volt adapter which is available separately into here and that will activate this socket. So this socket looks like an Ethernet internet type socket, which it is, but it has no network functionality at all. It's just because the cables are nice and cheap and easy and reliable and a good way to connect up your external lights. The output from this is compatible with the St. George type uh, external repeaters and also Leon Paul's repeaters but please make sure before plugging anything into it that you've looked at the instructions and you understand what it's outputting. And then finally, you've got the channel button on the end here. So this operates on the normal 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, which is free for everybody to use and doesn't require a license. But it's also the same spectrum that's used by lots of other devices like uh, your Wi-Fi connections and some telephones and that kind of thing. So there can be interference on uh, that spectrum. So you can use many tens of scoring machines on a single channel and they'll all come on the same channel from the factory. But if you have large, large numbers of scoring machines or you find that for whatever reason the system doesn't seem to be operating reliably, you can flick through any one of 16 channels. And to do that, you just press and hold the button for a second. The lights on the front will show you that you've changed channel and you'll very easily be able to find one that's completely interference free from the 16 that you've got. And as soon as your system is operating normally, then you don't need to ever worry about that or touch it again. So because you can run many, many base stations on each channel and you've got a total of 16 channels, in theory you can have hundreds and hundreds of systems working in the same space at one time. So for competitions and things like that, then there should be no limit really practically to the number of strips that you can run. Um, that covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video. We will have an FAQ section which will be in the product page on the website, so if you've got any questions you can refer to that. You can of course email your local distributor who will be happy to answer any questions that you've got. And we hope that you enjoy this revolutionary new technology.